Next from Springfield, we head to the House floor and hear Representative Jack Franks and Representative David Harris discuss the effects of the governor's cuts to the child care assistance program. This runs about 10 minutes. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a pro-business bill because it keeps people working. It keeps businesses with a dedicated workforce that are going to be showing up and are going to be able to do their jobs who are skilled. I got calls last week from a child care provider in McHenry County who was about to close down because of what's happening. I felt terrible for her, but I felt worse for those families who had no place to put their kids. Imagine yourself having to make a determination on what you're going to do with your kid or whether you're going to go to work. We shouldn't be in that position. This makes sense. What doesn't make sense is the argument that somehow because of our ineffective to do our job with the budget that these people ought to be punished. Let me remind this body that the governor gave, an, gave a bill, introduced budget that was $2 billion out of whack. This body passed a $4 billion unbalanced budget. I didn't support it because it was unbalanced. But ladies and gentlemen, understand that Moody's yesterday said, Moody's yesterday said, that we are now spending $6 billion more than we bring in. $6 billion more. So for my friends on the other side of the aisle who didn't like the $4 billion unbalanced budget, how do you like this? This is crazy. We've, we're the only state in the union who could screw up gambling. We're the home state of Al Capone, for crying out loud, and we can't even pay out on lottery. This is an embarrassment. So don't hide behind a budget issue here. This is about human dignity. And if you want to pay for it, let's pass a bill that will close some loopholes. Really, do we need to have an offshore drilling exemption for 25 million dollars there's no drilling in illinois would we rather protect those folks are we protecting exxon we'd rather protect exxon than protect working mothers wake up please vote aye the chair recognizes representative david harris Ladies and gentlemen of the House, thank you very much. And I'm going to address what this gentleman just said. $25 million in an offshore drilling allowance? Sure, we can get $25 million in an offshore drilling allowance. But guess what? Guess what? The deficit's billions. So unless you're looking at the income tax, unless you're looking at the sales tax, you're not going to close the gap. It's not going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, what are we doing? doing? What are we doing? You know, we have a federal judge that says, make these payments. And if you don't make the payments, you're going to be held in contempt. The state is going to be held in contempt of court. The federal judge has absolutely no idea what our finances are. Guess what? At the federal level, they have a printing press so that her paychecks gets paid every month or week or however long she gets paid. We're operating on continuing appropriations, on consent orders, on court orders. Guess what? We had a state fair. We had a state fair, and th th we had a state fair because the budget for the state fair is contained in the, the appropriation for the Department of Agriculture. Oh, wait a minute. We don't have an appropriation for the Department of Agriculture, but we have a state fair. We can't make child payments, but we have a state fair. Does anybody see the incongruity in that? Yeah, and you can say yes, but you know what? You know what? We are all at fault. We are complicit in this problem. We are complicit in this problem. We are enablers 
of our leaders. I have had any number of discussions with colleagues on my side of the aisle, on the, on the Democrat side of the aisle, and they say, why? Why? There is a middle ground. There is a middle ground. Now, we're not going to get all the money that my, gentleman, my friend from, from McHenry County thinks we're going to get simply by closing loopholes. It's going to take revenue. That's taxes for those who don't like the term revenue. But you know, it's fair to say there's a middle ground on some of these other issues as well. There's a middle ground on prevailing wage. There's a middle ground on project labor agreements. And we don't have to eviscerate collective bargaining to get to the middle ground. The state legislatures are, are leader-driven institutions. They are leader-driven institutions. Nothing happens unless the leader moves legislation, uh, legislation through the process. Nothing happens unless the governor says, I'm willing to sign the legislation. So knowing that, let me say this. Governor Rauner, Speaker Madigan, President Cullerton, leaders Rodonio and Durkin, I implore you, I beseech you, I beg you, stop this madness. The great state, our great state of Illinois, this, this land of Lincoln, is going to end up where we were four and five and six years ago with seven, eight, nine billion dollars of back bills that we can't pay because you know what, I'm not a very bright guy, but I know this. We're going to bring in 32 billion, maybe 32 and a half, with the tax structure that we have now. We are on autopilot, and no one, no one disagrees that we are not going to spend any less at the current rate than 37, 38 billion dollars. That's five billion dollars in difference. What are you going to do when the money runs out? I don't care what a federal judge says. If the comptroller doesn't have the money in the account, they can't send out the check. Our state, and, and, and we sit here, our state is being driven to the brink of a financial abyss, and we sit here and watch it happen. It's got to stop. Thank you. The chair recognizes Representative Tryon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the sponsor yield? He and the she in the case you will. I, I rise in support of the comments made by a representative from Arlington Heights. I have to tell you something. I have been here for 11 years. I've never seen the tension in this chamber the way it's been in the last few months. What is the governor supposed to cut? We passed him a, a $36 billion budget with $32 billion of money. We can't cut child care. He can't cut State fair, we can't cut anything because you don't want to cut anything, but you don't have the votes to override your own budget of $36 billion. That's, we could be voting on that today, and you could have a $36 billion appropriation, then we'd have to make cuts. So where, where we're at right now today with no budget and the inaction of the General Assembly in Illinois, where we're at today is the citizens of Illinois are being governed by the judiciary and the executive branch. We're about the most useless politicians in the state of Illinois right now because we can't come to an agreement on anything. But if we can't agree we only have $32 billion, then what's the governor supposed to do? He can't print money. And we're heading to a day, a day in the future, where Illinois will run out of money. And that day is getting near. Right now, the managed care contracts in the whole state say if they don't get paid by the state of Illinois in 60 days, they don't have to pay the providers. 60 days was yesterday. So some of your providers aren't going to get money for their social service agencies. And while that may, may survive with the big hospitals and the big agencies, the little guy's going to get hurt real bad here. And for us to just argue about we can come up with $25 million here for this program. We did $15 million on heroin when the department is going to manage the program, says it's going to cost 50. 
We need to get serious about managing the budget because today the budget director testified we have $32 billion in income, we have $38 billion in expenditures on our way from consent decrees, court orders, and continuing appropriations. $38 billion. All right? If we do this ask me override, you're not going to be able to manage the $700 million deduction that was in the budget that you passed the governor. All right? We won't be able to even negotiate that. We also are going to add a potential another $2 billion to the budget. Just to get where we need to be, you have to be willing to make a vote of 5.75% increase in the income tax. We have to take it from 375 to 575 to support a $38 billion budget. I'm ready to talk about revenues. I want to talk about some reforms, but I'm not going to vote to raise taxes on the state of Illinois 6 to 6%. I'd like to see a show of hands on that side of the aisle. Who is willing to raise taxes to 6%? Because that's the trajectory that we're going on. And it is a serious thing when we're not going to let any cuts be made to any program, and we're just going to kick the down, can down the road to April, where we're going to end up bankrupt, and we won't be able to make half the payments that we're supposed to make. This is a serious problem, and I hope I hope that the leadership on your side of the aisle and our side of the aisle can get together and come to a consensus that it does have to stop and we sit down with the governor and we talk about reforms and we talk about financial responsibilities. But to come down here and say it's ridiculous to make cuts, I don't know what the governor's supposed to do. I guess just spend us in till there's no money and that's exactly what we should be concerned about. Thank you.